call it a church in my mind. Um, it is a church, but they're, it's a cult. He's the most high-profile defector ever from a controversial Brentwood church, and tonight he reveals shocking new evidence about how he came to decide it was a cult. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. All this week, we have heard dramatic new revelations from Michael Shamblin, the son of Remnant Fellowship founder Gwen Shamblin. But what you are about to hear may be the most dramatic yet. Phil Williams continues his News Channel 5 Investigates exclusive. You know, Michael was not only the son of Gwen Shamblin, he was also once listed among Remnant Fellowship's leaders. As our interview unfolded, he would suddenly drop a bombshell that I had not expected. Looking inward, looking upward at the example we're to follow. In videos for Gwen Shamblin's Remnant Fellowship, the members were always joyous, the children angelic, and because the church sprang from Shamblin's Christian diet plan, almost always fit. This is God's hand. Thousands upon thousands of pounds of weight loss in this congregation. And Shamblin's teachings were the only true teachings. She would have said, this is a group of people who are looking for the lead of God. What it actually was, it's a group of people looking for the lead of Gwen. Michael Shamblin was at his mother's side through it all, and it was there that he says he saw Remnant's dark side. You have how many hundreds of people have I talked to, how many situations of husbands, oh, their wife gets to go joint, go visit this church for a weekend. It's just an innocent little sweet lady talking, and it's reading the Bible, and then there's a dance part. And then a year later, the husband is fighting for his life, fighting for his children in custody and with everything, he, his last penny, to try to get his family back that's been ripped away. That God asked for a small divergent group of people to leave other loves behind. In her sermons, Gwen Champlin would talk about the need to leave other loves behind. Gwen wanted to have this Pollyanna type, you know, 1950s or whatever appearance. But then she would go back in a room and tell someone to go give someone the business who's fighting us in a custody battle. Let's go figure out dirt on somebody and send some undercover person to go find dirt, you know? She would do that? Absolutely. They became a well oiled machine. Are we the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I did. Okay. Yet when Gwen Shamblin ended up in court fighting for custody of her new husband's daughter, she insisted under oath that none of the criticisms of Remnant were true. Have any of the members of Remnant Fellowship um, been asked to leave Remnant Fellowship because they're overweight after being there for a long period of time? No. Certainly people have been asked to, to sit out and leave because of overweight. They're asked to webcast to not come into the sanctuary. Uh, do you encourage members of the Remnant Fellowship not to socialize with non-Remnant members? No. It was, and I'm not kidding about this, it was we are the only ones who are holy and everyone on the face of the earth is evil. And you were to steer clear of others? It would be automatic. All of this brings me back to that interview that I had with Gwen 20 years ago. And I asked her, so you think if you lie for God's sake, it's okay? I believe that if God calls you to, that you had better protect Jerusalem. I don't think she was making that up. I believe, I know she believed laws don't apply. It's okay to lie if, if it's for God. Her view of God. Her view of God. And really what that meant was if it's for Gwen. And Michael Shemblin had one more thing that had been bothering him all these years. I'm going to say this, and the people at Remnant are not going to like this, but if the Remnant members sitting in that building realized how much information that these people have on them, there would be no one left in those seats. What kind of information? Guidance information. The guidance system. It's a guidance system Michael says he saw with his own eyes. Every single member that joins gets a file started on him. And they start collecting video footage. They start collecting photos. Now everybody get comfortable, it's time for the testimonies. That includes testimonials that they give at church. 
they purposely get people who join the church to get on stage and share a testimony. They only do that, it's for ammunition for later, in case the person turns. Michael later provided evidence of Remnant's guidance stats tracking the marital situations of certain members, how they were doing on their weight and personal issues such as lust, instructions that certain members needed to have their weight reported once a month and entered into the guidance system, dates and times that members signed onto Remnant webcasts, in one case noting that a member usually has it going in the other room type thing and not necessarily listening, Gwen Champlin notifying her team that a female had been monitored and surrounded by fellow members, and Gwen was saying yes to her request to return to church. Notes that one remnant wife was not completely under authority of her husband and questions him. Documentation that another woman had been counseled to stop controlling and driving her husband insane, that she needed to just put the jeans on that he wants her to wear. It shows every time they've ever had a doubt about Gwen, there would be lists of saying, so so-and-so's wife said he had a doubt about leadership. That's an own record in a, in, a, in, a, in a system. And did you see that used against people? Absolutely. A lot of times you'll have people that are maybe even upset when they leave out of here. Which made me think of my 2004 interview with Gwen Shamblin and another church leader. I had asked them about a former remnant couple who claimed the church had pressured the wife to give up the mental health medications that had been prescribed for her by doctors. So if you read her testimony, she went back on her drugs. So it wasn't from the lack of drugs that sent her back into a psychiatric hospital. We have all the information in the world on this person. As soon as they turn, we're going to eat them alive in court because we have all this video footage showing how much their life was changed by Gwen and helped by Gwen. Shortly after the plane crash that killed his mother, her husband Joe Laura, and five other remnant leaders, Michael Shemblin left the church. His sister Elizabeth is now seen as the church's new leader. When somebody like leaves remnant, I experienced the same thing. I went from having hundreds of texts a day to zero. After the initial shock, he says it's been the best part of his life. And I've had the realest conversations with people since I left the church, the cult. It's like, and I don't know how to describe it, it's like I woke up from a 20-year dream. There was a haze the whole time. As for those still in Remnant. They have said this recently in Remnant because somebody reported to me. If you leave the remnant, you have left God. I think that's unfair. And what I would say to that is, God was around before remnant, and he will be around after remnant. He was around before Gwen Shamblin, and he'll be around after Gwen Shamblin. Over the last few days, I have repeatedly reached out to Remnant Fellowship, hoping that the current leadership would give me a response to the specific concerns raised by Michael Shamblin, but so far I have received zero response at all. What a fascinating interview, though, Phil. He mentioned his sister Elizabeth. Did he have much to say about her? Well, th that's one area where he was very protective. He said he has enormous compassion for his sister, Elizabeth Hanna. After all, she lost both her mother and her husband in that plane crash. Remnant's website, I checked today, it still says it operates, quote, under her direction and leadership. Although, oddly, I'm told she only phones into services, sometimes maybe even recording messages, but doesn't actually attend the services themselves. Interesting. Phil, thank you. There are so many layers to this story, and Phil has one more installment that we will see on Monday at 6, and we will hear what Michael Shamblin revealed about the child abuse death of an 8-year-old remnant boy and why he thinks the church needs a reckoning about its role in little Joseph Smith's murder.